This is Rock and Roll Radio. Come on, let's rock and roll with the remote. We could blow this place apart if we wanted to. My first gig, I actually had the urge to jump into the audience because I was so used to being there. Welcome to the second episode of the Ramones Nerdcast. In the previous week, we introduced you to the Ramones music and the Ramones uniform. Today, we would like you to get to know the band members. The Ramones had eight members in total. Johnny, Joey, Didi, Tommy, Marky, Richie, Klemberg, the drummer from Blondie who played two shows with the Ramones, and CJ Ramon. Like on the previous episode, CJ Ramon will also be with us again today. He will share the most significant character traits of his brothers with us, so stay tuned for that. Another special guest on this show is Monte Alexander Melnik, the Ramones' longtime tour manager and the author of the legendary book On the Road with the Ramones. For the start, we focus on the four founding members of the Ramones. We'll do it according to the Ramones logo, starting clockwise from top, with Johnny Ramone. Johnny Ramone was born John William Cummings on October 8, 1948. He was the oldest member of the band. When he was a kid, he would take home the rock and roll seven inches from the jukebox in his parents' bar, Elvis, Chuck Berry or Jerry Lee Lewis. Soon after, he went to see the Beatles at Shea Stadium and he threw rocks at them because he was a fan of Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones. Most of the kids in Forest Hills would run away when they would see Johnny walking down the street. Monty A. Melnick remembers why. Well, from what I've read about him and heard about him at the time, he was a juvenile delinquent. You know, he's a really not a pleasant person. He like, uh, you know, he wrote about going up on the roof and throwing television sets off the roof, and they ri ripped off pharmacies and stuff like that. He was a JD, a juvenile delinquent, not a very pleasant person. Then he had an epiphany and changed his life. He got a job as a construction worker, he got married to Rosanna, and he bought a Jaguar. Later on, he would buy a red Chevy Vega. When he lost his job in 1973, he went to Manny's Music on 48th Street and he bought a blue Mosrite guitar for 50 bucks. Johnny and Dee Dee decided to start a band. Dee Dee suggested to name the band The Ramones after an alias of Beatles bass player Paul McCartney. Johnny didn't mind. In his 22 years with the Ramones, Johnny was the inside boss. He had the last word on artistic and business decisions. When he came to terms with the fact that the Ramones most likely will never sell any records, he focused on making money through live shows and merchandise. Johnny did not only make sure that the band made enough money to provide for its members, he also made sure to spend as little of it as possible. Yeah, he was tight, he was tight, you know. He watched over the money and stuff like that, very businesslike, you know. After each show, he'd ask me how much we made, there was a percentage, and he'd write it down in his book, you know, who we play with and all that. So he had all these little diaries and stuff. You wouldn't see him going out spending a lot of money here, now, except when he, he did, uh, they did get, get into posters, movie posters, you know. So they, they would go out, and uh, in those days, the early days, they were fairly cheap, so he did invest a lot. He invested a lot in uh, baseball uh, eight by 10 collection of baseball players signed. That was like his hobby, He'd get the photograph and send it out to their baseball player and had the baseball player sign and send it back. So he, he had a huge collection of, of baseball memorabilia. And, and then, and then Marky and him started collecting movie posters before they became like super expensive. You know, I think he got one of the Metallica guys into it too, later on when they met them at Lollapalooza. So he, uh, he was a collector, and, and it was always in the stock market. It's, you know, it's always talking about, I think he got Joey into that. So, you know, he was pointing out the different uh, investments he uh, was doing, and then Joey all of a sudden got into the uh, stock market and stuff like that. You know? Wrote that song about Maria Bartiromo and stuff. So, uh, yeah, he, he, his money was, you know, he always wanted to know how much we made. He was always very uh, with the accountant talking to them and... Uh, the deals, he, he was on top of the business aspect of it. Around 1982, Johnny started dating Joey's girlfriend. The two got married more than a decade later. Even though this event caused a major rift between the two, Johnny and Joey, neither one of them decided to leave the band. 
Let's hear more about the unusual and fragile bond between Johnny and Joey from tour manager Monte Melnick. You know, deal with Joey later on. Uh, better not fight with him. Just uh, deal businesslike. You know, not no personal interaction. You know, this whole thing about them not talking that got a little overblown a bit. You know, they they just basically kept businesslike. I mean, Johnny realized that the band was more important and stick staying together because the music they can make this music and and make money on tour and make albums. You know, why break that up? So their social life, they never socialized, but they it was more a business thing. So they did talk a little bit. You know, they had to talk about set lists and what to record and then the recording sessions and all that stuff like that. But they're basically their private lives, they kept very separate. Of course, what happened with Linda. Johnny Ramon was a Republican and a supporter of the NRA. Johnny might have been hard on the other band members and crew, but he was always friendly with his fans. He even sent out season's greetings to the most loyal Ramones fanatics. Two years after the Ramones had retired, Johnny got diagnosed with prostate cancer. He died September 5, 2005. Johnny Ramone, legendary guitar player for the Ramones, died in his sleep in Los Angeles on Wednesday afternoon. The last time Johnny spoke to tour manager Montemelnik was only a day or two prior to his death. And it was not a very emotional goodbye. They did that uh, thing in L.A., that tribute show, the 30th anniversary or something. He was mm -hmm. sick. Of, I talked to him on the phone. I said, he said, I said, I want to come up and see. He said, no, nah, I don't want to see anybody. He didn't want to see me. But I talked to him briefly on the phone then. And Johnny never gave compliments. He never said, hey, you, you know, after a show or did something good, he never would say, great, you know. The only thing is when we're <laughs> in Argentina, there's that, you know, when Marky's video, we're pulling out. Mm -hmm. And there's a hundred fans in the street there, you know. So I had like four different security guards there for that. So I sent the security guards out to the street to try to clear them. It's a one-way street. And so there's like hundreds of kids there, you know. So they try to clear the path. So we get out there and make a right turn. And then this van blocks us. So we're stuck. And then, of course, Johnny's saying, good job, Monty. Good job. Like, I had four freaking security guards. And I couldn't help that they blocked the road, you know. And I had four security guards trying to clear them away. But that was scary at the time when they were, you know, banging on the, the, the van and rocking the van. It was very <laughs> weird, you know. Once again, we welcome CJ Ramon as a special guest on this episode of the Nerdcast. He will answer your and our questions in the next couple of episodes. And today we want to ask him, CJ, what were the most significant character traits of Johnny Ramon? There's enough stories out there and enough books written for you to to know that uh, Johnny wasn't necessarily uh, well-liked by a lot of people. A lot of people resented him. Um, he was, you know, he was tough. He was, he was an old school, tough New York guy. You know, that's just kind of how Johnny was. But he was also, uh, at the same time, he really cared about the people who were loyal to him. If you were loyal to him, he was loyal to you. And he really did care about, about those folks that were closest to him. But he was uh, the guy in charge. You know, after Tommy leaves the band, um, the next person in line was, you know, it, it was Johnny. Johnny was the only one who could coordinate everything and, and keep the band moving and, and juggle all the stuff that, that you need to juggle when you're the guy calling all the shots. It was uh, a, a tough position and it took a guy like Johnny, you know, with, with strong character and a, and a no bullshit kind of guy. It took somebody like him to, um, to keep the band going. Never made excuses, never tried to uh, cover it up or act like somebody he wasn't all the way to the end. And I'm thankful for that because had he not been that way, the Ramones probably would not have lasted 22 years. Wow, thank you, CJ. That was really interesting. That's it for the second episode of the Ramones Nerdcast. Stay tuned for more episodes coming to you in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, please be so kind and head over to RamonesMuseum.com. There you can find various options on how to support the Nerdcast. We came up with a couple of really nice bundles for you that bring you closer to your favorite band. Thanks again for your time and support, and we'll see you soon. Gabe, gabe, hey. Hey.